Marigold is running from ghosts. The phantoms of her old life keep haunting her, but a move with her newly blended family from a small California beach town to the embattled Midwestern city of Cedarville might be the first start she needs. Her mom has accepted a new job with the Sterling Foundation that comes with a free house, one that Mary now has to share with her bratty 10-year-old stepsister, Piper. The renovated, picture-perfect home on Maple Street, sitting between two dilapidated houses, surrounded by weary neighbors, has its secrets. That's only half the problem. Household items vanish, doors open on their own, lights turn off, shadows walk past rooms, voices can be heard in the walls, and there's a foul smell seeping through the vents only Mary seems to notice. Worse, Piper keeps talking about a friend who wants Mary gone. But running from ghosts is just a metaphor, right? As the house closes in, Mary learns that the danger isn't limited to Maple Street. Cedarville has its secrets too. And secrets always find their way through the cracks. Okay, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Woo! So, White Smoke Ooh. by Tiffany D. Jackson. Mm -hmm. How do you guys like it? Joy, you want to go first? Uh, I'll give it a two and a half. Yeah. If you told me it was the same okay. author from last week, I, I'm surprised. Did not enjoy it too much. <laughs> okay, okay. Jackson? <laughs> um, I, I'd i say like 3.5. 3.5? All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like, give it a five star. Yeah. Honestly, I've been going back and forth if I want to do like a four and a five star. So I'll give it a four and a half stars. Wow. Four and a half. Wow. And uh, you'll have to excuse me. I jumped right into the ratings and I forgot to do introductions. So yeah. I'm your host, Jan. And I'm your co-host, Joy. Woo! And we and have I'm a guest around this time. You want to introduce yourself? I'm Jackson, the coolest guy on this whole podcast ever. Okay. You're the only guy on this podcast. <laughs> That's very true. All right. So we're going with two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. <laughs> Ah, okay. So it might be a five by time this ends. Or it, it might, might be a, a four. four. You never know. <laughs> All right. So I feel like the explanations for these ratings might get into a little bit of a spoiler town. So I'm just going to give our spoiler warning now because if you haven't read it and you don't want to know what's going on, you should log off now. All right. So who wants to go first and explain their rating? I'll go first. I did like it, especially coming off of the book last week. I really liked the book last week. Monday's not coming. This one, I did not care for it. It has spooky moments, um, but that's all I can really say about it. I didn't care for Marigold, didn't care for Piper, didn't, well, Sammy was kind of cute, but it's just like, I didn't find the main character, Marigold, a likable character. You know, <laughs> at all. She she just seemed very like um annoying. So this you have book. a role of rating because you didn't find any like connection with the characters. None. Yeah. Okay. Jax, uh, a quick overall mm -hmm. explanation of your rating. So I feel like mine is actually kind of the opposite. That the ratings higher because I did like the characters. I didn't like Marigold. It was not that she was like, well, she was kind of like standoffish the whole time and it did start getting annoying, but it's more that Sammy and Yusuf were just so good that they saved the book. On top of that, like they had interesting themes, but personally, I feel like they didn't dig into it enough to really justify it being there and to be an aspect of the story, as well as I, I just have issues with the ending. Okay. And it was yeah. really All right. it, it stopped. It was abrupt, right? An abrupt ending. It was. I hated well, that. Okay, we'll Sorry. get into the ending for sure. But I just want to give my quick explanation because I think it's interesting. And you both said you didn't like Miragoat because I feel like I enjoyed the main character. And I actually like the ride. I know I have said multiple times on this podcast that I don't read scary books. This was just scary enough for me. Like, it was scary enough to be creepy. And I, like was scared legitimately like could not get out of bed when i was reading it but i actually read it at night like under the blankets and it was a fun time and it wasn't so scary that like i couldn't sleep so that was nice it was just this the right book, amount 
it was not scary, Jan. Like, I feel like our... Yeah, All right, Joy, like, let's get let's hear your recap. I don't want to hear about how you thought it wasn't that scary. <laughs> let's All hear right. the recap. So White Smoke. So we have Marigold and Sammy, brother and sister. Um, I think Sammy's like, how old was he? Like eight, nine? He's a youngin. Well, he was in middle school, wasn't he? Yeah, he was like 13. Yeah. Really? Because Piper was 10. Yeah. Joy, this is why you can't do recaps. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would expect you to do at least a little bit of reviewing before you do the recap. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The way that I picture Sammy, he just seems so adorable. Like, okay. You know, um... Can I say something real quick? Hmm. Piper was obviously the youngest, and I literally just said her 10-year-old sister in the recap that I just read. So you, I mean, in the synopsis. <laughs> so you didn't even listen to the synopsis. Denise, you're <laughs> you thought he was eight or nine. You clearly have an issue with the illiterate. Let's let's dig into that. <laughs> no, I was thinking um, the little brother Antonio, the little cousin from um, uh, what's that one? Um, uh, Marabella. What's that? What's that? What's that? The Disney movie Encanto. Encanto. That little boy Antonio. That's who I pictured this whole time as Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> that was silly because he was a full blown middle schooler. Now, <laughs> continue with your recap. Let's see what else okay. you got wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mary go to Sammy, brother and sister. Um, their mom is Raquel. They, um, they're moving away from California with their new stepdad, Alec, and his daughter, Piper. Um, and it's because the mom, Raquel, has a new opportunity because she's a um, a, a writer or an architect or something like that. Um, a writer. Yeah, she. So she got an opportunity to live in this really nice free home because it's a historical build or something like that for free. So they're all moving out there. Um, apparently this is right after Marigold had like an overdose. Um, like I don't know what she took. I forgot what she took. Um, but uh, it was weed laced with fentanyl. I yeah. Thought, um, with fentanyl, yep. I don't know why I had ketamine in my head. Hmm. Yeah, me either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but basically, um, they're trying to get settled. The house is spooky, ooky. <laughs> the movers don't want to stay there very long after dark. Once they start going to school and everything, things still are kind of weird. Piper, Mary, Ron, and Sammy don't really get along. Um, Alec is, yeah, Alec is clueless. He's just a clueless white guy, basically, and always like taken up for his daughter who's kind of a brat <laughs> no matter what happens and um Raquel it's just kind of there <laughs> um Mary goes she meets Erica and Yusuf and Erica she smokes weed and that's what she's been honing for since she left California like an addict <laughs> every two minutes she needs some weed um she hasn't figured out where to get it because apparently there was this whole violation with the city or whatever outlawed for a while um, and she gets the idea to just grow it in one of the abandoned homes um, near her house because her house is the only one that's like not abandoned right on this street Maple Street um, she's doing that and that's how she met Yusuf to get supplies for her garden because her parents don't trust her with her money or anything like that after she overdosed um, and spooky things happen and it turns out someone's living in their house two people Miss Sugar and, his, and her son and that's it. That's how it cuts off at the end. <laughs> what I don't understand, that is not true. What I don't understand about your recaps, Joy, <laughs> is that you give so much unnecessary detail <laughs> that I feel like you just get tired of talking and you get to the end. Like you never actually talk about the plot of the book. Like all I just want like you to say book. is this book is about Marigold and her family. She has a stepsister that's a little bratty. She has a stepfather she doesn't get along with. And they move into a haunted house. Things are disappearing. Like She has this side plot going on where she's trying to get weak because she has anxiety because she's afraid of bed bugs, which is a huge part of the book that you did not mention. <laughs> you can say like this it town was gonna come is up. the worst place <laughs> for her to move because they have criminalized weed to the point where more than half of the neighborhood is locked up. And at the end, it turns out that the ghost that were haunting them is actual people. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> what are you? Why do you have to give everybody's career and ages that you always get wrong? <laughs> I feel like I I got people's astrology sign, but I don't know anything about the city. <laughs> exactly. Like, but Joy, what's the book about, though? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. It's my summary, and I do it the way I want to do it. Well, Which is yeah, we know summary. it's your summary. That's why it's wrong. <laughs> all right well we kind of started talking about it so let's um start off with uh let's actually give a rating for how scary you guys thought it was since that's so controversial out of five stars one i think it was a solid three and a half stars whereas which i that's where i want my scary and i'm very happy with that i'm i'm going to go with joy i'm also i'm going to be giving it a one and that's partially why my um score for the book overall was so low like it was supposed to be a horror story and i it's not even the sort that like oh well if you think about it it's scary it was it's like it's like a uh campfire story if anything you know yeah, exactly like, mm, it was just quaint it's it like scary ghost bugs level scary that's yeah. fun anything else is too scary it's that's yeah. fine when you're five. <laughs> yeah. I just don't it understand why I wasn't scary, Jackson. No. I mean, it just wasn't even spooky for me. Personally, I feel, like, I feel like I personally <laughs> had spookier instances of ghost encounters than this book. Honestly, I'm just like, that's nowhere near as bad as what I actually live. So I'm not really that scared. What do you feel like the scariest part was? Um, Piper, which they're trying to leave the house, like when um this like Sammy's voice calling for Marigold. And he's like, I'm not. That's not me. Get in the closet. And then Piper's just like looking at her down the, at the bottom of the stairs and then like looks off and then walks away. <laughs> I'm like, that bitch is top of the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was scary. Yeah. Well, yeah, it wasn't serious. like her wasn't as scary to me, but like <laughs> them listening to his voice was very scary to me because I've had instances like that. That, that was definitely out. the uh, peak yeah. in horror for this. No, I don't that part, part, okay. That part was scary too, but what else kind of like gave me the oogie boogies was the part when she was in the um in the kitchen at nighttime and the door was open and then the music started playing and everyone was like, What's going on? But the door was open and she's like, I don't know if I wanna move and like make a run for it to go upstairs or what I wanna do, you know? <laughs> Looking back on it though, it seems like they accidentally left the door open and someone started the music to distract her so she wouldn't go down. Mm -hmm. like that's what it seems like but that part wasn't that scary for me what freaked me out was the alarm like i don't know why that freaked me out so much when it was like rapid alarms going off mm -hmm. and it was like, i think about the psychological factors where they had her freaked out and checking on the beds and then the bed bugs and having her Ooh. freak out like that that's that scared the shit out of me there was one part that was so ridiculous when the guy was standing in her room and she put a post-it note and the only thing that was back <laughs> on, this, on the other side of the post-it note I couldn't the post -it stop note laughing thing. after that that. Was, that was genuinely a cute idea <laughs> that was so funny <laughs> she was so <laughs> mad she actually put her hands on Piper for that <laughs> that scared the hell out of me goddamn piper <laughs> could you imagine if a ghost just made a like if it was a real ghost and it just put a frowny face <laughs> it wasn't a frowny face she forgot the angry eyebrows like that it was an angry frowny face <laughs> and it didn't have the sharp teeth <laughs> oh yeah and the sharp teeth too <laughs> <laughs> y'all gonna hate on this book but i felt like it was a nice little haunted mansion like from the disney ride moment where you're scared but not terrified and i genuinely like that so the haunted I think mansion that's where a different scary. i don't get scared of the haunted mansion that's what i'm no saying it's spooky but not terrifying <laughs> it's like halloween decorations you get you in the mood for spooky without scaring the literal shit out of you perfect 
right. that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> I ha- I wish more horror novels were like this. Is all I'm gonna say. Man, if horror novels were like this, I would never read them. It wouldn't be scary at all. Whatever. Like I don't mind that. Like it basically jumped to thriller. That's why I expect from most horror. I just don't feel like it did it so well. I don't know. Like it just the way that it was going. I didn't care for Marigold constantly feeding for weed, and I didn't care oh, well, that like. Hmm. Since you're talking about the characters again, how about you just tell us your least and favorite and why? I think my least favorite would probably be mm, whoever the mayor guy was. I don't know his name. <laughs> he was a villain. Mr. Sterling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, my most favorite would probably be mm, Sammy. Yeah, Danny. Okay. I mean, self-explanatory as far as Sammy. He was an awesome character. Yeah. Self-explanatory for the villain-ass neighbor. Or mayor. (laughs) Yeah. Jackson? Mm -hmm. So, least favorite. I'm sorry. I know everybody, even in the book, was saying, oh, you just got to go easy. My least favorite was Piper. And my favorite, I absolutely loved Yusuf. He was awesome. Why didn't you like Piper? I disagree with both of those. Really? Like, not in my top. Like, Piper is not in my bottom, and Yusuf is not in my type. But I'm curious as to your choices. So, like, Mm -hmm. I really did think about it. It was like, okay, well, maybe they were saying it themselves. Piper is just a kid. But even then. Mm -hmm. She's 10. You'd have to be. and, And 10. You'd have to be especially stupid to just have actual real life people living in your house that you are talking to and dealing with and threatening your family and just not let anyone aware of this. I just felt like Mm. even for a 10 year old, for any person, she was just being completely unreasonable. And like there is unreasonable for children. But we deal with children younger than 10, and they are more reasonable in those situations than Piper I mean, was. I feel like they I just. Don't know. I feel like she was telling everybody the whole time that she was real, and no one just believed, like, no one believed her, and no one liked her at that point either. Like, I just figured she was like, well, this is my friend at this point. I've alerted people, and no one's listening to me. She I mean, was the only she person knows- listening to me. I mean, I suppose, but like, she knows her dad listens. He listens to her over everybody but she else. she told him and he but, kept saying leave her alone she has an imaginary friend and he was like yeah it's okay i know miss sugar miss sugar like he made it seem like he believed her and just didn't care like she could definitely do more than just say oh it's real like you could say oh it's real this and this and this and she's just choosing not to when just being fine with that person creeping but around Washington the house could have said something too and he was a grown-ass man Wait, like he kept is, saying he suspected if you suspect enough to spend every night in your truck outside you could have said something oh for sure that's that was well ridiculous. that's just one of the reasons why she's not in my bottom first of all she did alert people mr watson had his suspicions and didn't say anything and mr sterling for sure knew and was like plotting on destroying the whole neighborhood and not caring what happened to a little girl who was only 10 so yeah no way is she in my bottom but, i just um, think that she was I definitely annoying where- I can see what Jackson like it with the camera. Little... I just no, I saying, I can't get. I agree behind what it. you're what you're saying because she's a little older to to let people just be in the house with your family, but she is still younger to understand. Like if you think that your new step siblings don't like you, you know your dad just thinks you have an imaginary friend. There's not much more you can do past that, especially being a kid. It's just like me and Jan. We just talked about um. Monday's not coming last week and she was 13, 14, 15 and nobody listened to her. You know, so I can't imagine a 10 year old saying like, hey, it's Mrs. Sugar. She told me to do this. Or like if, if Marigold is saying that you did something, he's like, no, it was Miss Sugar. And it's like, okay, like Piper. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of hard to because she's still a kid. Like kid. I think mostly it's like bad parenting because even when yeah. she was saying crazy stuff, like I didn't like mess with her things. It was Miss Sugar. That should have been some disciplinary action. And then she oh, kind of sure. probably would have insisted and you would have checked it out. 
But instead, yeah, they chose please. to ignore everything that she was complaining about. Like, okay, now she's not now being she- reasonable, so let's just ignore it instead of digging okay. deeper. If I'm going to edit it, then my least favorite then would just be Alec because his terrible yes. daughter is terrible the whole time and he's not doing anything about it. I can't I feel like I can't get it behind. Alec that was parent. awful. I will say like the worst moment as far as characters in the entire book is when he's saying, like, I've had enough your addict daughter like put Piper at risk and was saying all these awful things about a teenager. And then turned around like the next day, the mom was like, well, he's hurt that we had a contingency plan. Like, did you really just call this girl an addict and talked about how she's on drugs, how she's putting everybody in danger? And this is the last straw all in front of her face and then be pissed because we predicted it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, really? Like, that was you as a grown man saying this stuff to a child. And you're mad because she said, "Okay, this isn't working out. I'm leaving. Yeah, Yeah. that was really messed up. I am. I don't know, like, I didn't like him the entire time, pretty much, but I just figured he was... I watch a lot of scary shows, too, and it's always the white dad that's just like, there's nothing going on, everything's fine, you know? <laughs> but um, at the end, he did have a little bit of a character development, like, hey, you can't talk about my daughter that way, at the end. And I mean, that's just kind of like, there, there was worse people in the story, I feel like, that makes him not as much of a villain to me, personally. You know, like, he sucks. I thought he was possessed. Wrong, but... After he said he knew where the key was and nobody knew where the key was, and she was like, is he going down here the whole time? I'm like, oh, so Alec is possessed. That's why he's acting like a freaking maniac. But no, that was just him. I didn't so. think that. I just thought it was like, oh, it was a white guy. He got the key. He, like, you know, ghost shit don't happen. But what about just, like, the tooth, right though? Off. Like, what when you mean? saw the tooth on the ground and she was like, oh, well, um, Piper is looking, like, real possessed lately and losing weight and looks frail. But this tooth is too old to be hers. And I was like, it's Alec. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was just like, oh, ghost tooth. <laughs> I think at that point, I kind of called their twist just because this was something that this this is something that happens often enough that it just immediately came to mind. It it was that one of the things where when it, came, when it came out and there were actually people living there, I was like, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> but I was like, I guess. Right. <laughs> they were well into the fight before I realized what the twist was. Like, when they were watching the actual video and they saw they came, like, she came out the cabinet, I was like, oh, so this is a grudge-type ghost. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I did not think it was actually people there. I'm like, they can see this thing. <laughs> and I thought it wasn't, that like, was until she was about, like, they got the gun in the fight, and I was like, it, that worked? I guess they're real people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it took me a minute too. I thought she was like a, a grudgy kind of ghost too coming out of the cabinet when she saw like her scarred arm. And I was like, holy shit, she has the ghost. It's right there. And then she did something. She's like, oh, wait a minute. She's human. I was like, oh, oh, okay. Burn. It's okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it took half a second too. But um, I mean, I it say, wasn't that big of fight. a. Like I, I, I kind of prefer it to be ghosts, though. I feel like it would have been spookier if it was actually ghosts and not someone living in the house. Well, you know how I feel about scary stuff. I prefer a thriller to a, so like, a possession. So I was like ecstatic with the twist. Like, oh, thank God. I beat the shit out of somebody in my house. Anyway. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Like, with it coming to be people, you're like, okay, I can fight them. I can shoot them, whatever. But if it's actually a ghost and the ghosty son or demon or whatever... That's just but it scary. Wasn't. Yeah, exactly. that's what I'm saying, though. And that's why it went from, like, a three to a one. I was like, okay, people, creepy. I get, like, the ick kind of factor, but I'm not actually scared anymore. I'm like... That whole scene know? where she was, like, when you think about that scene, when he took her blanket off of her, that is scary as hell. Like, it's not even just yeah. the ick. It's scary. This Miss Sugar went as far as poisoning this guy, but she was in her phone typing alarms like she could have stabbed her at any point that is terrifying i mean yeah that's scary and like i said it gives me the it comes like someone's in my house you know what i mean but that that's scary when you say it that way for sure and it makes it even funnier that he just made us an angry face on the post but <laughs> well, that was piper though it wasn't him it was piper the next day but jack tell us um that was a way a huge side trail side rail we got sidetracked. Um, but Yusuf, why is he your fave? 
I thought he was actually very well written. Like his how he reacted to things made perfect sense. His backstory was like well presented. It's not just all it's not all just thrown out there. And I just felt like he was actually a good character. Like, okay, he's mad. This is reasonable. I understand that. And then how they just kind of breadcrumbed lore coming out of him and everything. And like I said, with the um, sticky note thing, that was really cute. I liked him. I, I just I thought he was a good guy. I felt like he was a little bit too judgy for me. Like, he treated her as if she knew exactly what was going on in the town and, like, the whole thing about the weed situation. He was, like, super pissed off. He could have, like, listen, Marigold, I know you're from California. Weed or whatever, right? Cool. Here, not so much. All the blacks are gone. They locked our asses up. They, you know, they planted shit. Like, you know, like, you can't be fucking around with that kind of shit here, you know? And that would be the end of that. Like, there's no reason to be pissed off with her and, and and drive away and, and be angry, even though he forgave her pre- pretty easily. But I'm just like, easy conversation. And the whole thing about the house. I didn't want to tell you that the house was haunted. Like, I'm living here. Give me a heads up. Like, you know, we don't got so many times. And that never came I up. <laughs> yeah, he seemed like a bit of a know-it-all and judgy. Like, with the yeah. first time that she said, like, hey, Erica asked her if she wanted to hit. And first of all, he spoke for her, which I was like completely like, don't speak for me. And then got mm-hmm. pissed when she said yes. It was like, mm-hmm. okay, ick. <laughs> that gave me the mm-hmm. ick, if anything. And then when he got mad at her again, I'm just like, either choose to hang out with her or don't. Like, don't get pissed at her for being the way she is and judge her for it. Or like, even when she had to check him, I'm so glad she did check him when she said she has anxiety and he like immediately was like, what do you have to be anxious about? Like, just because you're going through stuff does not mean other people are not going through stuff. Mm-hmm. I have anxiety is a full sentence. Like, don't, mm-hmm. I don't have to get into the details with you and you definitely don't have the right to tell me what's anxiety worthy or not. Like, you do not know me. Like, he seemed to assume a lot about her and then got pissed when it came to not be true. So yeah, I agree. No, he I- had a lot of good, he had a lot of good features and like qualities but they were also enough that I was like okay I'm not really feeling him to be like a favorite yeah. See, um, I totally agree with what you guys are actually saying but just that they wrote him to have the presence of mind that he does come around he does change his mind he doesn't completely cut people off he came back and apologized about the um anxiety things like I respect that because you know how many people wouldn't and that he would, and he's a teenager, too. Because, I mean, the bar is low for teenagers. The bar is low for all the kids. So, you know, with me saying I don't like Piper, the bar was underground. And I felt like she had to dig to get under it. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I just feel like they, he's, he was well-rounded. I agree. And I feel like I like Tiffany D. Jackson. This is only the second book I've read from her. But I can say I like her novels because all of her characters are imperfect but still likable. And I feel that way with Piper, too. Like, I felt like she was 10. Right now, I feel like if I found one of my relatives that I'm very close to dead, I'd be traumatized. But she, at a very young age, younger than 10, found her grandmother and had to sit with her body until her dad got home. Like, that's traumatizing for anyone. And then to immediately after that, move in with this family who doesn't seem to like you. One of the teens who you don't know what drugs are, but she's, like, saying all these nasty things to you and then overdose. Like, that's a lot for a mm-hmm. 10-year-old to go through and still like their family. And then to figure out yeah. that Marigold never apologized to her for any of that. Like, I can definitely understand why she was the way she was. And that's with everything that she goes through. There's a lot of, like, snotty little 10-year-olds that are like that just because their parents are remarried without going through any of that trauma. So, yeah, I, yeah. I would say that she definitely wasn't my least favorite for that. But if we're talking about my favorite characters... Uh, my favorite character was Marigold. I'm so surprised that you guys didn't like her so much. And I'll tell you exactly why. I love that she went through so much and was still, like, able to stand up for herself like she did with Yusuf. Like, she was, had a very strong backbone. Um, I feel like she was very flawed, but she was trying to recognize her flaws through the whole book. And, like, as soon as someone brought it to her attention, there was no, like, arguing. Like, oh, whatever. I don't that that person's tripping or whatever like she immediately was like oh shit that is true let me go and fix that she apologized to piper she apologized to yusuf 
And you can see that she was still punishing herself for something that like wasn't really her fault. Like I would say she was still very shit um shitty about her ex-boyfriend, but it seemed like he deserved that. So uh yeah, she also had been through a lot and was still focusing on improving her character, even with going through addiction and this like huge debilitating anxiety about the bed bug. So uh yeah, I felt like she was a really, really strong character. And I didn't even notice that she was self-centered because she was going through so much and I was sympathizing with her until her best friend was like, yeah, that's right. You are like that. And like said, you never call me unless you want something like, well, shit. I thought her friend was like standoffish the whole time and I couldn't figure out why. And so she said that like, oh, yeah, you're just like this, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I couldn't get with Marigold at all. Like, I understand having anxiety. I understand you went through a lot of different things, but she was extremely harsh to Piper all the time. Even if she didn't remember didn't like whatever that. she said to Piper when she right before she um overdosed. But it's just like you're 17 talking to a 10 year old, you know, and you want to fight a 10 year old. I understand you were scared, but that's real messed up. Bring it to your parents. You know what I mean? Like the way that she handled the issues with Piper was ridiculous. I feel like. And I don't think you guys are giving a lot of leeway to Marigold. I guess, Jang, you're, you're kind of cool with Piper, too. But it's just like Piper should get the empathy that we gave to Marigold because she's still a kid and she's been through her own traumas as well. And then for Piper, I too, like she's going into a whole new family, um, honestly, a new culture, <laughs> you know. And the only thing she knows for sure is her dad. And they've moved twice since they the dad met the mom, you know? So it's just like, if anything, as the oldest, you should be like reaching out. And this is what the mom and dad should have been doing too, like fostering a relationship between your kids, you know? So I felt really bad about that. But I feel like Marigold, I like her a lot less than I like Piper just because she is older and she did do these things. She overdosed, you know what I mean? Piper is still a child and even like when you think Piper is possessed I'm glad that Marigold went back to go get her when they were trying to get out the house at the time when they thought they were like under attack with like the voice and everything but I don't know like I feel like Marigold was way too harsh with Piper to be 17 and for Piper to be 10. I agree I I feel like that was by her least favorite quality is like how harsh she was with Piper which is why I kind of liked how the book did with them like reconciling and saying they need to do better. Like both of and them. Like too, I feel like that was like a redeeming point for both characters. My next thing I didn't like about Marigold like, is like, that she had very oh, much like on. an addict kind of. Sorry, Jack. Oh, I was saying like if like with Piper's situation, if that was an actual child, I would give more leeway than Piper in the book. And that's mostly just because, and I get that because it's a book you can only ever get the one perspective but i just they there was just nothing really provided for me personally to come around on piper as a character like there just wasn't there really wasn't anything there everything that ever was presented of piper until like i don't know the last 20 pages it was all antagonistic it was all there to just make her look worse and worse and there just was nothing there for me to latch on to. to I don't come know around. if I would agree with that because they talked about how she like didn't have any friends and how, well, the trauma with her grandmother that came up before the end. And they talked about her moving, like being displaced twice when they met. Like all that came up before the end. My thing about um Piper too is that everyone seemed to be really mean to her. Like throughout the book, I feel like everyone was so harsh to Piper being a kid and being a lonely, traumatized kid too. Yeah. Like when the mom, when the when the children's moms came over and was just like, "Hey, she tried to lure my daughter into one of the abandoned homes. You and your weirdo kids, like stay like stay away from us." You know what I mean? I was just like, she was just a kid trying to make friends. And they're like, "Hey, I know people, like you know these fun people in these houses. Let's go play house or something. You know, that's abandoned houses." Like I feel like people were just like super mean to Piper. <laughs> like I think now, people forget she's a kid. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's just Mark's that go against Raquel and Alec just because if anybody came up that would at least at the very least be like a proper conversation but just like they treat the kids like they're cats how you just kind of plug and go mm -hmm. they just expect them to sort it all out without any sort of help 
and I feel like that's definitely an aspect of that whole flawed unit they had going on. But I wouldn't blame Piper for it. I wouldn't blame the baby of the whole family <laughs> about the whole if family's anything, issues. Like, if anything, I would say, like, seeing how awful they were at parents and how bad they were at discipline and, like, being a united front, even with the kids, would explain even more why she was the way she was. Like, the way Alex reacted anytime she complained about something. Like, I blamed him for her behavior way more than I blamed her. Mm-hmm. Right, because Alec always, it didn't matter what it was, he always would just side with her. He doesn't even seek details or anything. That just wasn't It was reinforced, parenting. and she weaponized that every time. Right. <laughs> like when she said, Dad, um, what was it? Mary goes trying to steal my speakers to sell it for drugs. <laughs> he actually believed her or something like that? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that's the thing though like when i feel like when you read it you can't just go from jack i see what you're saying like as far as her actions like you didn't see anything redeemable but you can't just look at her actions you have to look at the whole story and kind of like analyze like what does this do like all these parts that i'm learning about this character how does it influence their behaviors oh for and sure. i feel like her behavior is like we're very much like, I just from her like- trauma and from her like the nurturing is rather than nature. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel that. I I totally get what you're getting at. I just feel like even with the situation, speaking like thinking of it realistically, this child is just failing. She's successfully fl- failing stranger danger spectacularly to the point that you're letting <laughs> strangers stay in your house and threaten your family in a real but way is it really her <laughs> failing stranger danger if she told someone and no one's believing her again i feel like that's a fault on her parents and i feel like in black households they say all the time like they don't want you to have imaginary friends because of shit like that like if it's a real ghost or if it's a real person you know like that is a prime example of okay maybe you can have imaginary friends but let's actually talk about it let's not just turn the cheek and hope she gets over it you know right i feel like for me Piper was a little too old to have an imaginary friend being 10. I feel like imaginary friends are probably for that ripe age between like five and maybe eight. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like 10 is too old to have an imaginary friend. And so I would obviously question it like immediately. Like, when would you step in with Piper? Just like how we did with Monday's Not Coming. Just like, you have an imaginary friend. What the hell are you talking about? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're a little too old to have an imaginary friend. Can you tell me more? You know, and even then I would try to play into it a little bit. Just like, okay, I made a sandwich for you and I made a, fa- a sandwich for Miss Sugar. Is she going to come and eat with us? You know what I mean? It's one of those things. Where I'm just like, okay, where's this imaginary friend? You know what I mean? Like if it was a ghost, I'm like, at least the ghost might like me. They might not kill me in my sleep. But if it's a person and she goes, go get Miss Sugar. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's just I just like there's different ways to kind of like figure out what the hell she's talking about. And you probably could get out of her like it's an actual person. Or even if it's like something yeah. like she had Miss Sugar's necklace or something like that. I'm like, that's a haunted artifact. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> anything, anything, you know. So yeah. Uh, can we get off of Piper for a second? I want to get back to Marigold and how much I don't like her. Um, even when I was 17, I knew growing weed in an abandoned house was dumb as fuck. <laughs> Especially in a place where they were like seriously, like heavily criminalizing weed. Like she yeah. just saw her friend Erica get planted. Like they planted weed on her. And because of her research is what she thought. Mm-hmm. Like they're monitoring your internet, but you don't think anyone's going to see you go into this house. Like it didn't make a lot of sense. She um, was yeah, dumb. that was that so was just dumb, one hundred percent. Like when she's like, "I'm just going to grow my own weed." I'm just like, "Oh, you know, obviously people think about that. Like whatever, I'm going to grow it." But you don't actually follow through with that shit, especially in like a prohibitionist kind of <laughs> wait, a abolish. Listen, they don't like weed there, <laughs> and it was fucking dumb. <laughs> and on top of that, yeah. you black. Like, even when you live in Colorado, California, or whatever, white people still get arrested for weed. Last thing you want to do is end up growing it, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I thought that was so ridiculous. And every other sentence in this book was, man, I just need some weed. Man, I just need it. Man, I just need that. I'm like, 
why don't you talk to your mom about your anxiety and see if she can take you to a doctor? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing, Xanax. too, that I didn't understand. Like, she said that she was on some, like, kind of medication for her anxiety, and they just completely pulled her off of it and pulled her away from her guru and, like, her therapist that she was talking to mm-hmm. and didn't replace them. And I was like, how did you think that was going to work? Like, you move. If your kid has this much anxiety that she's having episodes, like, you saw the episode. It was very intense. Like, I'm not going to judge her for talking about weed every second just because I've never had anxiety. I have anxiety. And I know how, like, crippling anxiety can be. I felt like a whole, like, um, printmaking class. Not because I was bad at it or didn't like it in college, but because I would go to class every day, stand outside the class, and could not go in because I had anxiety about that area for some unknown reason to me still. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and this was during class and after the class. Like, that classroom just gave me anxiety. So I know how crippling it can be. And I've never experienced something so intense as she has experienced. Like, that episode killed me. Like, he's telling you it's coffee grounds and you're not even hearing him. Like, he had to call someone to calm you down. And even then, sitting outside naked in winter, like, with your mom and your brother trying to, like, get you to breathe, it took 45 minutes for them both to get you to just come into the house. That's Ohio. Like, that's crazy to me. Huh? Yeah. I said that was Ohio winter, winter too. Yeah. Like, I, I have never experienced something that intense before. It actually made me tear up to see her. Like, that, that's intense. Like, that's debilitating. So, yeah, yeah I can't is. blame her for wanting, like, to take the edge off. That's a failure on the mom, too. Like, your daughter had an overdose. You moved her. She has anxiety. This is all the things you know. Why did you never check in with her? Why did you never say, hey, how's school going? Hey, how have you been feeling with the new move and everything? Like, she never did any of that. And she sucked. <laughs> yeah, they, they, there was a, a lot of options instead of just forcing her to go tur- cold turkey and expecting that to work out. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, sure, like, recreational use was illegal in that town, but medical medicalized weed has been around all over the place when she was complaining about the medications they had her on. And then her saying that she was using weed as a replacement for that because she's still dealing with the anxiety that taking away the medicine doesn't make that go away. Like, mm-hmm. that was the, absolutely a massive failure on Raquel's part. Or even the reason she had anxiety was not just the bed bugs. It's the fact that she had bed bugs and she was telling people and she said for like a year they didn't believe her. Yeah. You know how like... <laughs> Well, you told everybody, your mom, your dad, they didn't believe you. They took you to professionals and they didn't believe you. And then after, they still act like it's your problem. Like, why are you still scared of these bed bugs? Like, because, like, now I have, it's not even about the bed bugs. It's the fact that if something's wrong with me, I know no one's going to believe me. And it's been years. It was I years she that. lived with bed bugs. Years. Exactly. She lived with them. They took her to a dermatologist. Like, what's going on with her skin? I told you it's bed bugs. You know? <laughs> They're like, no, I no, it's with... probably this. <laughs> no. <laughs> and like, I yeah, dealt with bed I... bugs for a month. I can't imagine a year. That's the. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Like, I can totally imagine exactly how she feels because I'm sure I'd panic that way too, honestly. And then again, yeah, so she panicked like she knew that. before anyone else. Mm-hmm. She had yeah, two, they weren't she listening had two to issues. Her. She had two um, run-ins with the bed bugs. And both times she ended up naked on the porch. I'm like, why didn't you take her to someone then? Either one of those times. Because remember she said she ran home from when she was helping clean up a, a, uh, the highway or something. It was a mattress. And she ran home taking off her clothes. Nothing yeah, she didn't that? tell her mom about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just. Like it's Sammy knew. I mean, it I makes sense. Like... That she wouldn't. Yeah, Sammy knew about her running home naked, but I don't think she told the mom or Sammy didn't tell the mom about that. So I don't know. Raquel. Yeah, that but the point parents. where she had that <laughs> Yeah, they were awful. I was very glad when they said they were leaving. Like that's the best thing for them. Sure. So. How would you feel being the friend on Skype and getting those creepy ass Skype calls? You know how fast I would turn my computer off? <laughs> You can't keep calling me, bitch. <laughs> I would log off of Skype, uninstall it. <laughs> it was FaceTime. Was it FaceTime? Yeah. Yeah. That's even worse because you can't uninstall FaceTime, I don't think. <laughs> oh, yeah. <I> don't. 
Yeah. I've been so scared. And every time she so, called you someone walking around behind her too. Nah, girl. Well, that only happened the one time, but that like put me in the mood for this podcast. Like that's why I wanted a wall behind me rather than sitting at that other desk. Like, nah, <laughs> I just want a flat surface. Like I don't want any doorways. Where someone can be walking past, like no. Well, there is still a door like right it. behind you. Right, it so it's a closet. Right it's not anybody it. walking past, and it's closed. But what? Boy could closed? live in a closet. Yeah. Whatever, it's closed. I'm talking <laughs> about now. any open doorway. I mean, to um, be fair, my closet's so, a little open. I'm just like a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, you said you guessed the plot when you saw the tooth um, or the plot twist. Joy, yeah. did you guess at all what was going to happen? No, nah, I thought it was a ghost tooth. <laughs> ghost well, tooth. I thought Alex was possessed or Alec, whatever his name was. Um, which brings me to the narrator. I liked her a lot, but at a certain point, like it was so scary that I didn't want her talking. So I finished reading the book. Because <laughs> like I would hear her talk. And then something would happen in the house where I have to like hurry up and find the pause <laughs> so I can listen. <laughs> and I was like, enough. I need you to shut up. I'm just going to read it. <laughs> That's probably but, why it wasn't that scary for me either because I was playing on my Switch too while I was listening to it. Just laying in bed listening to it and playing my game. Like, what happened? Uh, tooth? Uh, ghost tooth, you know. <laughs> That's probably why you can't do the recap. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should wow. pay a little bit more attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joy, I Sweet. can't multitask either. I just read it. <laughs> like I, said, I was in such a state of fright when that <laughs> hand popped out of there. I thought it was a grudge that it didn't even click to me that they were real people until the gunshots. <laughs> and I was like, why would a ghost be afraid of a gun? <laughs> well, if you watch Supernatural, they fill their shotguns up with salt and they shoot ghosts that way. But who's coming in with a shotgun full of salt right now? I mean, I guess they did all know it was a white house, so maybe they would have been ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can all just right, double um, barrel it. One I'm... can be salt and one can be a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm surprised that neither of you guys guessed the uh, twist. Just because like, there's been like media, like people were talking like big news stories where they have like somebody living in their house and they never realized it. Or it's been done in scary stories even. Like, did you see that? Um, I don't I think it was before TikTok when like somebody found like the um entrance behind their mirror in their apartment. That led to another apartment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. stuff like that. That happens a lot. So I was like, Oh, okay, there there's there's gotta be somebody in the basement. Yeah, that's true. That I mean it does happen and it is scary when it does happen. I just didn't see mm-hmm. I thought that Piper was possessed. I thought that girl was gone. <laughs> like I, 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 I knew her. about this thing. I, I knew about this being a thing, but I still believe she would possess. Like, what, no, no person would actually act that way. <laughs> and that's the thing too. Since she wasn't possessed, okay, I've been a nanny for years. One of the girl, the girl that I watched was Ted, and she had a little brother who was like two or three. Was if I had him out the house already after all this spooky stuff went on. If I thought she was possessed or not, I already decided, like Mary go to go and get her to flee the house. Why didn't she just go up the stairs and grab her little ass and carry her <laughs> out? Well, I was like, Piper, Piper, come out, Piper. <laughs> just like, go get her. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, she did. Like, I feel like she was thinking, like, if I can get her to come down the stairs, I don't have to. But after she turned around, she did run up to go and grab her. Like, I'm not playing this game anymore with you. I'm about to drag you out. And she got hit in the face for it. (laughs) You would have been hit in the face just like she was. (laughs) Probably. I would have been thrown down those stairs and broke my neck. Like, they hit it with a broom. Like, it wasn't like Miss Sugar wasn't there the whole time. Like, Piper came out, but she looked over to where she walked over to. Like, because Miss Sugar was already at the top of the stairs, just hiding in the shadow. Mm, that's true. Yeah, I would have been knocked so, out because I would have been grabbing them kids. <laughs> <laughs> I could not love the kids. <laughs> you would yeah. have to kill me that day. I'm like, listen, ghost or not, like, I'm getting this baby. So I would probably would have died in the story, honestly. I don't think I would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. I would have made it because I would have left the first day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I, and I feel like when my fight or flight <laughs> kicks in, if I don't feel like I can get away, fight is so much like my first response. So I would have known that they weren't ghosts real early on. Especially like with that guy standing in your room. You would have been fighting him. I would have been fighting him. <laughs> I feel like I, if I was in the situation, the story would have ended a lot, a lot earlier. Just because when they first moved in, some, oh, we're not allowed in the basement. Why? What's down there? Why can't I go yeah, into my own basement? Why? Why that's did a, nobody that's question with Mr. that? Mr. Watson, like I don't understand. Like he said that if they go down there, they'll be sued. But it didn't say he signed an NDA. Like why didn't he just say that? Like why was he so tight lipped? If you're concerned right? enough to wait on their street and the truck so many nights, why would you never say like even bring up a conversation like, hey, have you guys noticed this? I've noticed this. Have you guys? Like there was no reason why he couldn't discuss it. Like yeah, that was like, just hey, weird I worked to me. in your house. Especially since there are kids involved. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> he mm-hmm. saw all those kids that were in that house. Like honestly, I feel like a lot of the horror is made by tons and tons of really stupid failings from the adult characters. <laughs> and even with the whole mob thing, so Yusuf was talking about how they felt terrible about all this stuff happening and then like they don't do halloween because of the fires and whatnot but then they were just so happy to just dive right into it oh hey look at this the tarps and whatnot that are here that's not suspicious because like i get it it's a reference to the whole thing that was happening before but you know in real life people are like that's pretty suspicious you know yeah the way that they blow up (laughs) it just didn't make sense yeah it didn't make (laughs) sense at all Especially when it's like, oh, this little white girl missing. And black people be like, yeah, okay. that sucks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they wouldn't I go like the whole, whole thing... mob. <laughs> no, I think you have to consider that everybody in that town was trying to protect themselves because they burned down that house with Miss Sugar and her son in it. So more than like them worrying about the little girl, they had heard that they were still alive. And they were concerned that the story would have gotten out and they wanted to protect themselves from that. That's why she, he was saying, don't tell anybody I told you about Miss Sugar, you know, Yusuf, when he told her. Because his pop pop would have been implicated in that burning. And they thought they boarded up the house so fast and never went back because they thought the evidence was still in that house, like the burned bodies. Like That's how any of the story was able to happen is because they were trying to bury a secret. It's you know what? That's, a, that's just like I didn't interpret it that way. I was always thinking that Yusuf was saying, "Don't tell anybody I told you about this," or not even wanting to tell her about that house being potentially haunted, just because it would look like she was already freaking out. So he wouldn't want to, you know, do add onto it by saying, "Oh yeah, there's also a ghost in there." You know, it's one of those things because the whole like, acting yeah. seemed like it was dragged out. Go ahead, Joy. No, I just feel like you can't whip up black people to be a lynch mob. <laughs> like we don't do that. You know what I mean? I don't I don't think that yeah. that would have worked that way the first time when they killed well, they supposedly killed the son and then burnt down the house. I don't think it would have happened this time either when the girl went missing, even if they're trying to cover their tracks. I feel like there'd be more like, hey, you know, we did this a while ago. Maybe we should go into their house and check out what's going on, see if we can find any bodies or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's just like it's one of those things where I don't believe that they would just like leave it there. Like if they did do a crime like that, and then the people like you know the city wanted to start reinventing like the neighborhood, they wouldn't went in there long before they moved to that house. And I, I, I just I just don't see black people doing lynch mobs. They call them lynch mobs because white people yeah. did it to black folks. I don't. I don't see them following. But nobody was lynching anyone. But I mean, I mean they basically if burned did it. They found alive, that boy. Yeah, beat him up and burnt him in a house. That's a lynching. No one says yes, they burnt him in a house. They thought that the, that the son and Miss Sugar were burnt to death in the house because she went in to help him after they beat him up and left him in the house and it was on fire all of a sudden. Yeah. Like they yeah. definitely I think you guys are like killed. really misinterpreting this. So what happened was they found the little boy dead in one of the houses mm-hmm. because he got lost and was in one of the abandoned houses and got 
murdered by a drug dealer Mm -hmm. or like a or someone who was strung out on drugs. Mm -hmm. And then the white people were burning down the houses and it spread to the black people's homes. They never caught who was burning the houses initially. And that's when they were talking about the mob with the roost bills and things. Like the only time the black people were burning the homes was at the end. And that's because when they tried to find John John, who they said was like touching kids, they burned that house and she ran in and it got burned down. The house next door. Like that, like the house was had gotten burned from the white people, like the Russo's and things, burning houses. It was on Halloween and she ran in and nobody helped them because they were already like, you know, going against John John pretty much. So it was more like, like the only they were time more they were hands actually off. Writing. Yeah, exactly. The only time they were actually writing was at the end. And I think that was to protect the secret. But why were they protecting if they didn't actually do yeah, harm to didn't John John? It was like we just let his house burn was... like everyone else did, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, if that was the case, I still don't understand why they would do all that just to cover up that they already, we all already know we let him burn in the house and his mom. Like, that didn't make sense yeah, to like, me if I they didn't like... already try to attack him and leave him for dead. If there was evidence. Because if there was evidence of them doing something fine i kind of see that but if it was the white people doing it in the first place they had no hands like on it they're just like oh he's alive yeah <laughs> you like, know i feel like on either perspective we might have just stumbled onto a plot hole of sorts yeah i guess yeah, i'm maybe. just like I, I just didn't care for it I, it wasn't believable and then for it to kind of set up like these pallets of like um, um bricks and stuff like kind of referencing Black Lives Matter and how there was like pallets of bricks all of a sudden and all that kind of stuff and people rioting. I was just like, "Mm, that's too much of a setup. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) It's just, I I didn't care for it. But that actually happened though, like in the, like, riots for Black Lives Matter. like Yeah, but people were calling out. There were pallets sitting around waiting for people to break stuff because they wanted to make the Black Lives Matter people to be villains. And that's the thing. People like were that out, like, look, this is a new palette that wasn't here 20 minutes yeah. ago. Someone had to drop this off, exactly. right? <laughs> and obviously some people took them, but like a lot of people were calling out on Twitter, this wasn't here a second ago. Like, who dropped these off here? Well, the same thing happened in the book. They said there were a lot of people in the crowd that were still standing around the house when other people went off to riot trying to figure out how they can stop everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, there's yeah. just not... I, it, you can't think of it as, okay, they use the black people. Like, black people cannot be generalized. You can't just say black people won't do this. Like, everyone is an individual, you know? No, like, yeah, and I'm not saying even, you can't but, say, like, the majority of black people or the majority of white people, sure, but you cannot just say an exception. Every black person isn't going to do this. People on their own are individuals, and some people had had enough. Like, what if you were in Yusuf's shoes where your whole family? was freaking gone like maybe you're just oppressed enough and like on the edge enough like it's the whole thing with monday's not coming again we're like um mrs charles went through so much trauma herself and then like the thought of gentrification like made her snap like you never know what people are going through where they're like okay this is the last freaking straw i can't take anymore you know and they I seem mean, to I have put them in the exact right position to want to like mess stuff up it's just, I guess it was the way it was written. It just didn't seem very believable for Black people to do any kind of, like, mobbing like that at all, especially behind the reasons why. You know what I mean? It just it just didn't add up for me, and it took me out of the story. I'm just like, I don't believe that we would do something like that, you know? <laughs> like, generally, I, I don't think that that would happen either time. Right. You know? And even the time when the lights went out, uh, and they were even- the only ones with lights. Why would they, like, I, I didn't understand why they would come down the street like that. Like, that didn't make any sense to me either. So, I don't know. I didn't care for it. And that's probably why is that still at a two and a half star for me. <laughs> I have been in positions where the power is out. And yeah, like, as a whole, everyone comes out of the block to try to figure out why. And you might be walking around to figure out, hey, is the light out down here? Is the light out here? And, like, when you are in a big group like that, it's hard to control a huge group like that, period. And it didn't seem like they were out there for violence. Like, they were mostly making jokes 
and hurtful jokes, but <laughs> at the same time, like you're in a crowd. It's hard to control a big group. It always just, is. And yeah, but I couldn't blame like, them for having their lights on. Like it's a newer house. They just renovated it. All of our shit's kind of fucked but up. But you're not every person. I, feel I mean, like that's you true, do but I just don't understand the community. I don't understand the community reacting in the way that they react in this book. That's basically my thing. I have never seen a community of Black folks, especially the ones who's like in a community like that, so they're obviously close-knit, to react in the ways that they were reacting in this book, and I didn't care for it. It wasn't believable to me. And it felt like it was just like written there to have stakes there, to like a sense of danger, but I just didn't, I didn't understand why it was there. It was almost like black people were used as like multiple times in this book as just like a mob, like a brainless mob that could just be like influenced to do whoever is at the head's bidding. You know what I mean? And it sucks. And I didn't care for it. And it took me right out of the story. I think that's definitely your own interpretation. I, I don't know. Like, I, I agree with you, like to a point, like at the end, I felt like it was a little bit too neatly wrapped up. But as far as the power, I don't think that was unbelievable. And I do feel like there are people in the community that were friendly. And I feel like there are people in the community that were not friendly. And I do feel like that's realistic. Mm -hmm. I feel like in both of those situations, I would have been more forgiving of it, like seeming so sloppy, like what we were just talking about. If Because you're saying everything was neatly wrapped up. But like, I feel like the book has no damn resolution. It just stops. Like yeah. there's so much stuff that should have been tied up better so that you can just see what the, the full situation they're dealing with in dealing with is. And instead you're literally in the middle of a big action. And then the book ends like, what am I supposed yeah, to I do enjoy with this? It. I enjoyed it, especially considering the time that she wrote it. It was like right in 2021. And it was like, right where black lives matter was in the thick of it you know we were like going through a bunch of stuff as a people and it's still unresolved like you want to believe that she went on and went against the sterling company and like resolved a lot of things um but it's still unwritten like it still has to happen um i will say i was very like upset that i didn't get a real resolution with erica being yeah. imprisoned yeah yeah but as far as like her and what she was going to do to help save the community, the fact that she called it our community, like she finally had a place to belong and somewhere she felt like she had a stake in and can do some good was nice. I thought it was interesting that she said that she wasn't going to be able to run for a while and it seemed like she was focusing her, her energy elsewhere. I felt like going through this new trauma with Piper kind of gave her some kind of resolve to her bed bugs issues where she said it was still in the back of her mind. But like it wasn't as pressing as making sure Piper was OK and that she was just so exhausted from everything. Like I felt like it was the cusp of change for a lot of things. And change was a huge theme in this book where I was saying the affirmation with her all the time that she was saying, like, change is good, change is necessary. And then to have Yusuf say change isn't always good, which like made her say, wait, hold on. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. And like, just like thinking about the theme of change and if it's good and if it's bad and what needs to change, what shouldn't change, tradition versus like the future. A lot of that was a huge theme. And I felt like they ended or she ended it right where it ended because, again, we we're on the cusp of a change for a lot of things. Her anxiety, her track career, her belonging in a community. Obviously, if they're going to actually wipe out this neighborhood like they thought or not, like a lot of that is left up to interpretation. I, I hear what you're saying, but I feel like that wasn't the best position to leave it in, to leave it up to interpretation, because so much of the book is based on dealing with all of that stuff. And now that you finally managed to get it to a point where you can finally start seeing the changes that's been built up this whole time, it's over. Yeah, but what changed, like, what was she actually trying to convey in the book? Was it the resolution to all these issues or was it Mary Gold's mindset? These ghosts that she was running from seemed to be her own anxiety, her own uh, issues with her past, her own issues with not belonging. And I felt like she was on the verge of understanding all of that and she was getting through it. And the fact that like these ghosts that the neighborhood was dealing with was not actually ghosts. She was putting a name and face to all of those things that they were 
um, dealing with, you know, like when she was figuring out the research and like following the money, like a lot of things that were just vague and didn't have a face to put to the name was named. You know, a lot of these things that seemed to be like a haunting turned out to be real like problems in the community and like with her. So I felt like that was a good place, in my opinion, to stop. I'm just bothered that they never really got to the end with people living in her house. Like, I understand symbolism, but oh my God, you know. <laughs> my only thing is that I wish it would have wrapped up at least her mental health stuff, like showing her going to a doctor or something at least. Like, I feel like sitting on the couch, I, I understand where you said where it was, you know, to leave for us to interpret as we will, like she will be making these changes. But I just wanted to see a little bit more, you know, it's like maybe like a little down the road, like they moved out the house or they stayed in the house. The other houses were getting renovated. She was going to a therapist. She didn't feel like she needed weed or they got her medical weed or actual anxiety meds that actually worked for her. Any of those things show her relationship with Piper. She follow up with what happened with Miss Sugar in the hospital. Like any of these things. See what happened with Mrs. Sterling. Did John, you know, John, if John, yeah. John live. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so many things that were left. It was just like, I was just like, it was too abrupt. When it ended, I was waiting for the next. Fireman. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was just, yeah, you said, yeah. So I was just waiting for another chapter to start when I was listening to it in Audible. I was just like, what's the next chapter? And then it was credits. And I was like, that sucks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I feel like I probably would have gave this book a little higher of a rating if it had any kind of wrap up any of them you know the parents barely got into the house after she found piper you know <laughs> and it ended i just i thought it was too much that was the parents open, actually didn't get but... home oh yeah they were on the couch yeah so it's just like and they were on the couch at yusuf's house not their house i don't yeah. know i liked it like how did you feel about the ending of the giver or not not the giver i think it was the giver i don't even remember that book really I never that, read oh, any cliffhanger. Others? Do you in generally enjoy cliffhangers? <laughs> I like cliffhangers when it makes sense to have a cliffhanger. Like if yeah. it's just like one certain thing that's happening, but not a whole wrap up where it's like everything is leading to this point and you just didn't write about it. <laughs> right. You know? It's like if in the Phantom they end it right when they um like right when they just leave the um the opera I, house. Thank you. Yep. So and like, none of that. I feel like it's other stuff happened. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I definitely think it's a matter of preference. Like I generally do like cliffhangers, and I don't ne necessarily see like abrupt cliffhangers like this a lot. Like Ace of Spades, I feel like they kind of wrap that up at the end, like a couple years after, and I felt like it took away from the story because like it didn't it. make any sense. I don't think it made any sense. Like they didn't actually wrap anything up. Like how is it that the principal? was there years after with cancer, but not locked up. Like that didn't wrap anything up. It pretty much said that they left everything out in the open after that. Nobody followed up with police or anything. You know, like this really leads you to like, how would you like it to end? Like you say you want her to get help, but what if she doesn't get help? You say you want to see the, how their house was renovated. What if they actually destroyed the neighborhood? You know, like a lot of that stuff is unwritten. And I feel like it makes sense for the time that we're in right now because it correlates with so many things happening, so many things happening in the real world. My thing is, I would have liked it if the parents came home or if Ken and Yusuf picked them up and they drove out of the city with it like burning in the background. That's one thing because it'll be a cliffhanger of like what's going to happen. But it can also interpret it as they're a family unit. And they made it out alive, and that's what matters. You know what I mean? They figured these things out, and they left the, the issue. Like, it was just, but I don't know. Didn't like, you get didn't... that with Alec coming around and defending her, and then her and Piper, who was the biggest divide in the family, making up and saying they need to do better? Like, I feel bit. like it would have been a little cheesy, actually, if everyone came together at the end, especially since the dog and the brother were still in the hospital, away from, the, like, Cedarville. And, like, they didn't have service because they purposely cut off service. They made it, like, this very insidious thing where, like, nobody has service because they didn't want them reaching out and getting help. They cut off access to the city so they couldn't have driven away from the city. You know, like, the police were barricading people in and not letting people, all, like, out. Like, all of the, like, it would have been cheesy to have them driving their way with the city. Like, if that's all you needed, I feel like that wouldn't have worked with the story. Yeah, I wouldn't have liked it if that was the ending. 
don't know. But either way, I do feel like it's a matter of like preference. Yeah. And I feel like that's how it always is with cliffhangers, even like really well known works of art. Um, yeah, some people hate a cliffhanger, period. So it, it is a matter of preference. I personally enjoyed it. I can see that you two did not, even though you don't really agree on what the ending should have been. <laughs> I see like we're just kind of scattered with that and that's fine. I feel like that's kind of what cliffhangers do. And that's the point of a But book club. I do want to hear from other people. Yeah, exactly. I do want to hear from other people like if you like the ending, if you like the book, if you thought it was scary. So, Joy, do you want to tell them where they can find us and write in about their opinion of the book? Yeah, you can find us at Black Girl Reads Podcast um on TikTok and um Instagram and on Twitter it's Black Girl Reads pod the black is spelled b-l-k on all of them because that's how the cool kids spell it <laughs> she can stop saying that at any point <laughs> i like it it's a tag <laughs> jackson where can the audience find you if they would like to reach out i can be found on basically every social media platform at 100 pugs that's the number 100 pugs no space <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm just going to go ahead and announce the next book, which is a another horror book called Burn Down, Rise Up. So next week we'll be reading this one. The synopsis goes, mysterious disappearances, an urban legend rumored to be responsible, and one group of teens determined to save their city at any cost. For over a year, the Bronx has been plagued by sudden disappearances that no one can explain. 16-year-old Raquel does her best to ignore it. After all, the police only look for the white kids. But when her crush Charlize's cousin goes missing, Raquel starts to pay attention, especially when her own mom comes down with a mysterious illness that seems linked to the disappearances. Raquel and Charlize team up to investigate, but they soon discover that everything is tied to a terrifying urban legend called the Echo Game. The game is rumored to trap people in a sinister world underneath the city, and the rules are based on a particularly dark chapter in New York's past. And if the friends want to save their home and everyone they love, they will have to play the game and destroy the evil at its heart or die trying. That sounds Is her crush Charlize or Charlize's cousin? Charlize. Okay. Yeah. That sounds spooky. <laughs> I like the idea of an it underground world. It's fun. Yeah. I like this one. Um, it's no, it doesn't seem like there's any possession involved. So I was afraid to read a couple of these books this month, but I'm just excited for this one. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so when are you doing the Goosebumps chapter? <laughs> what? When are you doing the episode on Goosebumps? <laughs> I like Goosebumps. I don't know why everyone treats them like they're like not works of art just because they're made for kids. Oh, I oh, anyway, awesome. absolutely love Goosebumps. I just know that. So, did you guys see that like R.L. Stein rated this book like amazing? I did see that. He's actually on the cover of the book giving a good review. Yeah. I thought that was awesome that's for her, especially since it was, it was her first horror novel she's ever written. That's super cool. And I saw that there's a trailer for a movie for this, but I'm not sure if it was fan made or not. And I cannot find any evidence of a real movie. So I don't oh. think it is. <laughs> I feel like. But I would be happy with book. it. Like, I feel like R.O. Stein's books, The Goosebumps, there's some scarier ones than this one. Like Slappy. Yeah. The plant dad or whatever. Don't go in the basement. <laughs> that freaked me out more <laughs> than this story for sure. I can't think of any Goosebumps books that actually scared me. It's just that one dog in the theme, but those are great books. <laughs> no. All right. Well, it was great talking with you guys. Jax, thanks so much for joining us this week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.